Packers. And then, uh, well, anyway, hopefully it'll be funny. All right, Nick, you ready? Okay, here we go. Hey, you women are going to get mad at me out there. When you come to the games, keep your eyes on the puck. And I'm telling you, I've seen some awful smacks, and it's always a woman yapping away there. The amazing upper body strength of the Russians. So amazing. They're nothing. Just a minute. No, They're sorry. nothing. Turn it in, Calvin. T H I N. That's not. What is this stuff on here? We're hockey night in Canada and we're talking about saving the world and all that stuff. Let's talk hockey. <laughs> Uh, Nick Senior is doing well. How about you, Junior? No, wait a second. I like. Real quick, you can follow him on Twitter at Fabry's Curse. I like his bio here. I don't know who that Fabry's hair guy is. Boy, does he make me mad. <laughs> don't touch the Stanley Cup. Nope. I. 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 Go ahead. Yeah, how's it going, Eric? Sums it up. That, yeah, that sums it up pretty much. That February's hair guy was a total jerk. Um, no, uh, I am anxious to hear this story. I've never heard the backstory on this, how this all unfolded. Can you give it to us in a couple minutes? The synops- absolutely, absolutely. All right. Uh, so, um, when they, they had the NHL centennial thing in front of the library uh, downtown here uh, earlier this year, uh, you know, they had the Stanley Cup out, of course, for everybody to see. Um, now, my wife, who's the obviously the uh, both the beauty and the brains of our of uh, this of our duo, um, told kept telling me, "Don't touch it! Don't touch it!" Because she she knows me well enough to know that I'm gonna want to touch it. Um, I'd heard the you know the superstition about you know don't touch the cup, but I only I'd only thought it applied to players. So when she kept telling me that, I'm like, ah, what's it gonna? What, what's the worst that could happen? As I'm standing there wearing my autographed Robbie Fabry Winter Classic jersey, and we walk up to it, I think, just, just, just gonna brush my fingers past. It's just gotta touch it a little bit, just this once. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> okay, so now, so for, so from the moment that you touched it on that date, that fateful day. Uh, touch Lord Stanley, the Holy Grail of hockey. Mm-hmm. You put your pointer finger on it. Which finger do you think it was? Oh, it's a. Uh, I'd say the pointer and the middle finger just kind of grazed past it. Just, okay, just kind of stroked like, it. Yeah, just. Uh, okay. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even say stroke because that sounds bad. No, just okay, kind of no. grazed past it. Right, so you just you just grazed past it. I always <laughs> wasn't trying to imply bad, but uh, <laughs> stroke can be used in a positive way. I stroke my doggy sometimes, a puppy dog. I just give him little rubbies on his head. Okay, so anyway, but so you do that. Okay, now on this fateful day, which was you said in in the fall or spring? It was um, it's like the I believe wasn't it the end of January, early February? Okay, so um, it was the exact same day no. that Fabry got hurt. That's what I wanted to ask. So no, that yes. day. He's so hurt. like I okay, so now, at this uh, moment you. At this moment, you know you've made the connection in your mind. Now, what happens? Does uh, is there a picture of you? Is there damning evidence there that others saw that then everybody started coming after you? What happened? Well, what happened was, you know, I mean, I was still not thinking that you know this curse was actually on fans. Did not I? You know, I didn't think that right. this uh, superstition applied to fans. So I mentioned on Twitter, "Oh, we saw the cup. I touched the cup today." Uh, so I put it right out there on Twitter for all to see. And Uh-oh. of course people will start responding like, you can't do that. That's bad luck. I'm like, Oh, come on. I even said in a in response to somebody, Oh, come on. I was touching. I touched it while wearing my autograph fabric Jersey. That's gotta be good luck. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Now. Okay. So now who was the first person to really let you have it? Was it Hitch's hat? Was it game time? Who, who that was, was my that, wife, actually. My wife was uh, social media. Yeah, she was like, I told you so. Even if I hadn't mentioned it on Twitter, she would have read me out immediately. She's because so, she was all over that. Well, who was the first person to really give it legs to her on social media? Was re- you were starting to get buried? Um, pretty much everybody. Hitch's head is always kind of. Uh, it's always been kind of uh, that that uh, 
go to for him when uh, when we talk. It's the uh, you know, okay. oh yeah, well you broke Fabry. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's, he doesn't he hasn't forgiven you yet. I don't think anybody's forgiven me. <laughs> okay, that's why we're here today. This is a good intro. We're here today. This is this has this is redemption. This is salvation. This is the kind of the thing that uh you know makes a good story. All right. Now I, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but uh, Nikki is a graduate from uh, the University of Sedoma, which has uh, a degree. He's got a PhD in uh, metaphysical hypnosis. Ooh. Yeah. Well, you got one. <laughs> it doesn't take a lot to get an online degree. I think. I think what happened. Yeah, I think what happened is actually he just showed up at the site one day and uh, they handed him a degree and then they billed him. I that's mean, that's technically what happened. That's but still, right. But but that I think still makes him qualify because he's got a degree. So uh, we want to first of all, as we set up this uh, metaphysical hypnosis uh, session here, we'd like you to uh, first of all, obviously, you need to relax. So. You have a comfortable position you can get in. You can either lay back in your chair, whatever you want to do. All right. Just get relaxed. Now, okay. now next. Get in relaxed. Okay. And um, clear your mind now. Clear your mind of all thought. That was, that's easy. Okay. Now, no, wait a second now. Get 15 out of there. No, okay. Clear it out. Okay, clear it out. No, no 15, more, no, no 91. Fan. No, 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 no blues, no nothing. It's just completely blank. Okay, is, now. Um, that's how it is about 95% of the we, time anyway. We want you to go back to that day. Okay, now go back with us. And in your mind's eye, oh, yeah. travel back to that moment in time. But you are not you. You're outside of you. You're outside of your body right now. You're watching yourself, okay? You can picture yourself. Now tell us, mm. what exactly did you do? What did you see happening? I see... Me and my wife standing next to the cup, and we're get, about to get our picture taken. Okay. And and, and now and you're about to get your picture taken, and I the, see, the picture snapped. I see, I see myself uh, raising up my hand to to reach for the cup. Okay, stop there. Yeah. Okay, now keep relaxing now. Okay. Now, how did that make you feel as you were reaching for the cup? At the time, it seemed. Seemed exciting at the time. Okay, Nikki, cue the clock. Okay, now listen to the clock. Listening. To the only the thing you hear is the clock. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Okay, now you're there. You're you're a hundred percent there now. Okay. Yeah. Now you're technically in a hypnotic state. You just don't know it yet. All right. Now, you visualize the events. You see yourself now reaching for the cup. Okay, as you said, you're getting ready to brush the cup. Your, your hand's moving forward toward the cup, all right? Mm. Okay, yeah. now, now, Nikki, what should he do next? All right, this is the most important part now. I want you to step back. You see yourself really touching the cup. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Have you killed him yet? No. You haven't killed him yet? Okay, kill him. kill him before he touches the cup. We're not gonna kill him. Okay, don't kill him. Uh, restrain him. There restrain him. I'm going to tackle him and okay, not tackle him. The cup. Okay, you're like security. There okay, you. this is like the night at the museum. Uh, okay, you you've taken him out. Okay, you've taken him out. Taking him down. My okay. Wife looks a little confused, but uh, and I look even more confused. But okay, now. Now that person's down, okay? And the real you walks forward, okay? Now walk forward toward the cup. All right. Walking toward put, the cup. Okay, now put your hands behind your back. All right. Okay, your hands are behind your back. back. No worries. Now, touching now, now slowly back away. I'm backing away from the cup. All right. Back now away. turn around. Look for a sign that says exit. I see the exits. It's okay, right now there. run for your life. <laughs> okay, now you're out of it. From the cup, <laughs> you're not out of the. You're not out of the hypnotic state yet. You have to count down from fifteen. Okay, <laughs> count down. Count backwards from fifteen. Fifteen, fourteen. Speed it up. 15, 12, 11, <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
You're like I almost counted down in blue squares. Wait. Okay, I snapped my finger. Oh, okay, wow. now you're back with us, okay? I think our work's done here, Nikki. I think the curse is lifted, and I fully expect Fabry to be ready for the playoffs by next year. I mean, this year. Well, technically next year in June, okay? At least for the... Right. And uh, now we do have a prize for coming on the show today. We're going to send you a life-size replica of the Stanley Cup. And <laughs> you have to set it in your room, okay? And obviously, you got to put a sign on it that says, don't touch, all right? That's going to be hard because I did, you know, I, the, the cup's always so bright and shiny. You want you know, just kind of calls out to you. But I'll, I'll restrain myself. I'll, I'll hold well, back. I won't touch it, I promise. You know, Nikki, I mean – well, I think the curse is definitely lifted. I, I think, think that, I think that was some good progress made there. A couple more sessions like that. You don't think it's lifted? <laughs> I think it's done. I think our work I is done here. Done. I, I hope so because it's getting kind of rough. Like, even my even my family's dumping on me for it. I mean, come on. Hey, I get now text is for my brother about this stuff. I, it's, now, it's, it's, now it's technically, harsh. technically, you have been right from the beginning. These are NHL players that this is uh, applying to. Yeah, I have to say real quick yes. that uh, we actually got a tweet uh, just now from Hitch's hat. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, no. We tweeted out from Rob to go live. Tune in. We'll be talking about Fabry's curse. Uh-oh. Hitch's hat says he's going to break the show. He's going <laughs> to break the show. <laughs> oh, no. You know, I did notice the mic seemed to be acting rather strangely before we started. <laughs> It's gonna I don't, for the record, I haven't broken everything I've touched. Apparently, it's just specific to one NHL player, fortunately. Well, not not fortunately for him, but fortunately for everybody else. I have not touched – I have not broken anything else. I think it will be very interesting here if over the next three or four months we start hearing positive reports. Fabry skating, you know. Fabry may be ready for a, you know, early playoff first-round appearance or so. Who knows? We started hearing this stuff. That'd be pretty cool. Well, I also don't wouldn't want him to rush it back. Even though it looks like they rushed him back this time, and that obviously was not the the right call. So if they if it if they want to take their time with Fabry so that he really gets to 100 percent this time, I think I'm okay with that. And that's the truth. I found it interesting actually that they didn't use the team physician doctor. I read uh, actually not Jim Rutherford on the Athletic, a uh, great website. Go subscribe to it. But uh, <laughs> mentioned that they used a doctor from Chicago. That's what? Chicago. Chicago well, I should have known. The, come on, that's using a doctor from Chicago. That's as, just about as curse as touching a Stanley Cup. I mean, come on. Right. They're just well, asking for it. Just begging for trouble right there. Hey, I want to say that I want to say thank you for your uh, account. I think it's a lot of fun, man, having uh, you've I think you've entered the realm of uh, known accounts that like to uh tweet about the blues and make it fun during the season so uh yeah, I, I guess you must be having some laughs so thanks for doing that it's fun it's it's fun it you know, it can be goofy and you know and i despite all the trouble i get over the cup touching thing uh you know i take it with a grain of salt and just kind of try to roll with it thus mm -hmm. the change to change of the handle to fabry's curse <laughs> <laughs> is there any chance now that the curse is, curse has been lifted that you'll go back to Fabry's hair? Oh, I probably will at some point, but at this point, it's once I see a little, some visual evidence that the curse is lifted, we'll 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 wait we'll wait a little bit. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out, right? It'll get back yeah. in there. Hey, now when the curse, not if, but when it has been fully lifted and obvious to all, all a Blues Nation, you will give us credit, correct? Of course, well, yeah. Okay. Well, you guys are the ones with the hypnotic time machine going on, so I have to give you guys credit, of course. All right. I mean, it's uh, we recorded. It's all right here. Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. all live. All right. Hey, well, we'll let you go. I know you said you didn't have a ton of time, but we'd like to thank you for coming on. No problem. I'm happy to do it anytime. Mm -hmm. Thanks and for you guys. You guys can follow him on Twitter, at Fabry's Curse. That's his current handle. It might, it's subject to change, but it's at <laughs> Fabry's Curse right now. Uh, sure. Give him a follow. Funny guy on Twitter. And thanks again for coming on. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. See ya. Right, see, ya. see ya. All right. Bye. All right. So that was Fabry's hair, Fabry's curse, uh, whatever he's calling himself these days. So uh, big thanks for coming on. And we just cleared up Fabry's curse. So that's that's done. He's not cursed anymore. He's coming back. And let's get into some more hockey stuff. Talk here. We got some good stuff going on. Uh, brand new blue season coming up tomorrow night's the opener. The Blues are gonna be playing in Pittsburgh. Um, tomorrow night. Tomorrow. 
No, not tomorrow night. Uh, Wednesday night. I was getting excited. So close. I was. I don't want to wait two more days. I want to wait one more day. I don't want to wait that. But anyway, uh, hockey season starting up soon. Interesting things going on. But the, uh, first, the narrative for this season, before it's even started, seems to be injuries. This is just the current list right now. Wait a second. Wait Fabry. a second. Time out, though. Mm-hmm. So Fabry's hair knocked out Eric. Not, well, Fabry's hair, or Fabry's curse, knocked out Fabry for the season. Is there right. an outside chance that, like, Berglund's butt or something? Uh, or? There's bo- There's a boring Berglund Twitter account. I don't know what he did. He was probably out there that day, too. He was too boring. He just he just cursed him that way. But anyway, so the injury list to start the season is Fabry out for the season. Berglund's out until at least December. Steen is out with a hand injury, and he'll be reevaluated in about a week from now. Clem Costin's out for 7 to 10 days with a lower body injury, and I think it was uh, Tom Wilson that put the hit on him in the last preseason game. What a goon. From, uh, from Washington. Um, Bullmeister, fractured ankle and will be reevaluated in a few weeks. He's not going to return in a few weeks. He'll be reevaluated. And with that fractured ankle, it's going to be tough to skate. Um, Sanford's out with a shoulder injury. The boom- That's a lot of top six and top nine forwards right there that you're missing. You're missing a full line of NHL players. I liked your line that you had about this whole situation. You said the training camp should have been renamed to the concentration camp. Yeah, it was. This wasn't a training camp. This was a. This was the death camp. Oh, that's right, the death camp. Um, they need to come up with a better camp next year. I'll tell you what, because this is just killing everybody. Um, now, what do you think about the boom? Aren't there? Isn't there a group out there called the Boomeasters? They boo the Boomeasters. Yeah, B O O Meester. Yeah, I guess because I think that uh, I'm guessing they're probably happy that he fractured his ankle. There, there are a good number of Bullmeister haters. That is for sure. Um, I think it was a good deal when they signed him to it originally. Uh, it was a little bit long. Bullmeister's getting a little bit older now. He's not really a first pairing defenseman anymore. Um, it's gonna be interesting seeing the younger guys step up. Speaking of that, Dunn actually made the roster this year. He's uh, set to be on the third pairing with Bortuzzo on Wednesday night. So we'll get to see a little bit of that. Uh, we saw him in training camp. Was that Dunn or Wallman that we really liked? There was, I think it was Wallman oh, in, in a uh, prospects camp a couple months back and he had an incredible slap shot, but it just didn't come together for him uh, in training camp this year. He didn't make the team. So he's been sent back down to the AHL. So the blues announced their starting lineups or at least uh, Luke Korak did. Yeah. Korak uh, tweeted out here. Uh, Kersey Luke Korak. we got the starting lineups for Wednesdays projected. Uh, first line, Sabotka, Stasny, Tarasenko. Second line, Schwartz, Shen, and Yashkin. Third line of Payarvi, Sunquist, Thompson. And the fourth line is Upshaw, Brodziak, and Thorborn, with the extras being Barbashev and Wade Megan. Man, there is not a lot of star power in that lineup. Not a lot of punch. As far as just uh, marquee names. Uh, Yashkin on the second line. Yashkin is just a guy that's never really taken it to the next level for NHL play. He's always been okay, never great. But look sometimes better. very difficult to watch. Come on now. In preseason, though, uh, they said he looked very, very good. Yeah, now, come on now. End of the season, last two weeks, he looked good. And then in the playoffs, he had some key goals. And uh, he, he has flashes, but he just hasn't put together a long, consistent streak of, yeah, but of I mean, good play. But I, if he does, I'd be ecstatic. Well, I would just say that there's an outside chance he's made the turn. I just think be. that he's heading in the right direction. And uh, So how long is it going to be before we'll see Tage? Does he have a nickname yet? Tage Thompson. Is he the is he a Tommy boy? Is he the Tommy the boy? Tager? I don't know what the we'll we'll see how he plays. We'll come up with the nickname based off of that. Okay, so uh, uh, but, is it uh, how long do you think before we'll see him up on the first line, which is where everybody how how long have we been crying about and begging and dreaming about the day that we'll have a big powerful center in the middle? <laughs> I don't know how powerful he is, but a skilled center, a big guy right in the middle, feeding Tarasenko right and left, feeding him like a. Like, I don't know. Give me a quick illustration off the top of my head. Like Eating his Wheaties? Yeah, well, feeding him like the little boy in the movie Oliver when he said, please, Sam. That guy, oh, that's a horrible please. analogy. That guy didn't get fed at all. He please, was a, Sam, he was a starving oh, orphan. Boy. Yeah, but he got... <laughs> that's like Laterra. That'd be, an, oh, that'd that's be a right. good description for Laterra exactly being a center. That'd be Laterra. See, right now, that's what it is. Tara saying goes like, please, Stasny, more pucks, please, sir. Uh? Can I have more pucks, please? And Stasny's like, you want what? Anyway, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but back on uh, Yaskin, he's a guy that looks like he's got all the tools to be a good player. He's got, he's not a really huge guy, but he's got some good size to him. He's got a little bit of speed. He can be strong on the puck. And we've seen him be, what I like is that he gets in the middle of the ice. I like he, it. He's I in like front it. of the net. 
He's banging home rebounds and he's ready to play a dirty style of hockey. Somewhat one dimensional because he's got his go to move, which is effective. The wraparound. No, no, no. Well, the wraparounds, I think, is second goal. His go to move to me the last six months of the season, last three months of the season was was the uh comes in off the board, leans into the center of the mm-hmm. ice, kind of goes around the circle and cuts to the cuts to the crease, and then tries to create some kind of scoring chance from there. And he has scored a few goals that way, and certainly a some great opportunities and maybe got a couple penalties, which might've led to a few power plays. Who knows? Yeah. And I mean, um, <laughs> you're that like, and the Tate like, Thompson, I like that pause there. You're like, I think he's done. I think he's done. I see. Is he have anything else to say? Uh, Tate Thompson. We got to see him too in prospect camp and he was looking great. St- oh. Strong center, really good on the puck. He's got incredible, just puck control. His, his moves, he's deking around guys. He's a big guy. But he's quick on his feet. Very, very quick on his feet. Responsibly defensively, too. Responsible defensively. Defensively. And he's got a fantastic shot. He's got a lot of great tools. Great first round pick this year. And it was really exciting to see him make the team out of camp. Even with all the injuries. I'm sure the injuries had a major factor in that. But to see if he's going to be able to step up and play an NHL level is going to be really interesting over the course of these next few weeks. I like the point you made. I mean, I want to see him on the top line right now, right? But if he's on the top line, he's... He's paired up. He's against the top pair D on the other team, and they're checking forwards, right? I mean, look at the top two lines so, of centers for for um, for Pittsburgh. You're going up against Crosby and Malkin. There's no comparison there. You can't right you can't make his first game against those guys. So I was just trying to make the point that by moving him up too quickly when he's not ready, he could be exposed. In mm-hmm. other words, he'll be playing against uh, the other team's top checking line, and that could shut him down uh, by being on the third line. Uh, he's not getting as much attention, get his feet wet, right? Mm-hmm. Get used to the system, place, get some games under his belt. Even though I think the guy's ready, I don't think I don't think he's uh I don't think he has the jitters at all. I don't think he's phased by the by the big show. He stood out big time. He stood out big time in the games that we saw him play preseason. Uh, I think I think he's ready for the for the NHL. It's just gonna be a matter of getting up to uh, speed with the pace of the game, but I think size wise and ability wise, he's ready. Now is Schwartz hundred percent. As far as we know, yes, yeah, Schwartz is one hundred percent. So now that what do we miss? Did, now wasn't there a trivia question we recently tried to answer on who played the who played more games? Was the answer Schwartz? Did he miss like thirty or thirty games, and then played fifty two straight or something crazy? He played a lot of games. Uh, he was, he, he miss missed the start of the season chunk? though. He missed a lot of the start of the season. Okay, but the bottom line is he's been healthy for a while. So I mean that could be a big plus, you know. Schwartz is an underrated player. Yeah, uh, he's a lot like. I'd say his game right now is a lot like where Alex Steen was probably about two to three years ago when Steen was at his peak. What about Saboka? Do you think they're throwing him a bone by letting him get in the first line, which for for the last, you know, for a number of years with the Blues before he left for Russia, that was his bone of contention was not being able to get on, you know, be used more in offensive situations with the offensive players, the skilled players, right? It could be a little bit of that, but before we had this latest wave of injuries, he wasn't projected to be up there. Oh, okay. And this rule wasn't trained. I think uh, Yo's plan on that is more just to spread the wealth of the offense. He doesn't want to put all the all his eggs into one basket on the first line. He wants Schwartz on the second line with Shen. So Saboka uh, flips with him to go on the top line with Dazzy and Tarasenko just so that they got multiple lines that have scoring threats on them. Well, let's look at history with that thought in mind that uh, he's, try- he's trying to spread out the wealth, make mm-hmm. it a little harder to target one line for the other, making it a little more difficult for the other team to target one line and shut it down. Now, it seems to me that that hasn't always worked how does it strike you i don't have stats in front of me but just going off memory it seems like when we spread the wealth really first and foremost it highlights that we're injury riddled at the time yeah well, i can so tell you why like, that is right now because we have if, to do. if they're spreading the wealth it's not because they're saying hey we got so many good players you don't know what to do with it's because they're saying hey we got injuries and we need we got holes in need covered and yeah. so we're not going to have one killer line and roll three lines that can't score anything and you're only scoring a quarter of the time that they're on the ice are having opportunities to score, then they're saying, let's split up a little bit. This one line is not going to be as dangerous, but we're going to have twice the time on ice opportunities to score. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I'm sure that must be the thinking because it, I think that when the team is healthy, I like the thought of first and foremost, trying to have your best line, the strongest line you can possibly put together, put that together and let everybody else just work for their goals or whatever. But it hasn't, Pittsburgh done that for years with Malkin and, and Crosby and uh, Chris 
Kuntz, uh, Kunitz? No. no, actually, no. They they split up Crosby and uh, Malkin. No, they're not together. They're they're on separate lines. What Crosby's the hell first happened? liner, uh, Malkin second liner. Malkin, and you know, Quinnville did, did the same much. thing with the Blackhawks. He he would put he split up Kane and uh, Kane and Taze. T- uh, Kane would be on the second line with Anisimov and Panarin, and Taze would be on the first line. So spreading the wealth is something that a lot of uh, NHL coaches have done. Hey, speaking of Crosby, I got to mention that you know you know there's the there's the thought here, obviously, that uh, if you touch the cup, there's a curse, and if a player touches the Campbell or Wales, we've only got so many exorcisms we can do here. Yeah, but I was going to say that Crosby, the last two years, obviously they won the the what is it called the Wales uh, what is the it uh, Prince of Wales trophy Prince of Wales trophy. Yeah. Okay, so they were the Eastern Conference champions. Uh, him, Malcolm, and uh, Chris Kunitz, uh, they touched that puck, man. They were rubbing all over it. And uh, they, they touched that uh, trophy. On, on the back-to-back seasons that they won? Yeah, on both seasons. So, uh, you know, there's... I think... I, I think, don't know, maybe he's got a... He, maybe he gets a... Uh, ex, you know, an ex, he's excluded from that somehow. I think Crosby's excuse, or uh, what he said on that was that they lost the cup one time. Uh, early on in his career, and he said, "Well, we didn't touch the trophy then, and we still lost. So this time, I'm not, I'm not passing it up. I'm touching it this time. And that time that they touched it, they went and won it that year. So then, he, so ever since so then, he's been touching the the clearance. He's uh, got an exemption, so he's got the exemption because he's tricked the hockey gods. That's yeah, just, yeah, he's he's did give me the old roundabout. All right, he's done something. All right, when we so, so we, what do we move into? Speaking with, about uh, the young players yeah. on the team, back to that for one second. If you could pick one guy uh, that you think is going to be the best out of this young crop of stars because there's so many. There's Thompson, there's Costin, there's Dunn, there's Barbashev. Uh, which one of those do you think is going to have the best season for the Blues hmm. this year? Mm. You know, I don't think I don't think we can make an educated guess. That's only because we're not educated. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no. we're going to make an uneducated guess, though. <laughs> no. I don't think we can make an educated guess right now because basically all we have is the preseason. Right. The preseason doesn't really give you a good feel for what they're really up against and how they're going to react, right? It, what their potentials are. So I, what I would like to I think that that's a great question. Three weeks into the season, mm-hmm. if a guy's getting at least eight, nine, 10, 11 minutes of game time and we can see him on the ice, I think we'll have a good idea who really has an opportunity and who doesn't. Or, and I really, maybe all of them have, have an opportunity, obviously. It's just a matter of how quickly will they grow into being NHL players. Right. And, and successful this, this is our season players. preview episode, though. This is fun to do because when you, I like personally going back, um, ESPN articles. If you go back to ESPN and look whatever their season previews were for last season, it's absolutely hilarious to watch them say that uh, the Phoenix Coyotes are going to storm out and take the playoffs or the, the Kings are going to repeat with their cup. Uh, another miracle cup run. And you watch all these crazy predictions that they make and they're all dead wrong. All but right, at the time, they, right, sounded, they sounded good at the time before, okay. the, before the season started. All right. Well, then I'll just tell you Tage Thompson. Okay. Okay. He's number one. But I'll, I'll, my dark horse is the – uh is is blay i think i want to see that Same guy play. yeah i just think he's got some he's got some instinct around the net i think he's a kind of guy that's gonna be in the right spot he's gonna mm-hmm. i just i just want to see him see what he can do and the quicker that happens and i think i think it's gonna be a fun season i'm gonna jump to the side here a little bit from mm-hmm. the i'm gonna go off topic just for a second and say that uh what last year we didn't have any rookies in camp that really had a chance to make the team right from the from the get go. I don't believe there are many that, that had a shot to make the team from camp. No, definitely not. Anybody. Definitely not this many. No, what two or three years ago we had Pareko. Two years Edmondson. ago we had Pareko and Evanson, and I think the year before that was Fabry, or maybe it was this. I think yeah, I think Fabry came in a year before. Yeah, Pareko. so I feel like this year it adds an element of excitement, enthusiasm, hope, you know. And then Hosa, oh man, he's actually I want to back off. Huso? He, Huso is the guy. I just got to remember, oh, I keep saying yeah. Huso or something. You, you keep saying Hosa, like Marion Hosa. Oh, that's where I got stuck in, man. Huso. So I love the way he looked. Oh, man, he just Fantastic. looks so strong. Man, lateral movement, his uh, competitiveness, his, the way he battled the puck, the way he had some, he had great balance and composure and patience, all the little things that you want to see early in a goalie. You don't want to see him developing, you know, learning that at this level. He, I just can't wait. So that basically means I'm saying I can't wait for somebody to get hurt, <laughs> which isn't good. <laughs> and I hope it's not Allen. But I'd love to see him come up this year and, and get to uh, play some meaningful games. That'd really be cool. 
I think next year, I believe uh, Hutton's contract ends this year. And I think next year is when you'll see uh, Huso make a good push in camp uh, to get the backup role. Yeah. Oh, it's a, yeah, that's right. It's his last year, right? I, I, th- I believe this is Hutton's last year. Hutton. All right. What do we got? Uh, segment two. What do we got going on? You got the Blues. So let's preview. Let's look ahead to the first game of the season right now, Blues and Penn. So it's opening night. Uh, the Blues are going to be forced to watch as the Penguins are going to raise uh, another Stanley Cup banner to the Raptors. They're second in two years uh, Wednesday night. And they're going to be facing off against longtime fan favorite Ryan Reeves. And this will be his first game not in a Blues uniform. And his first game against his old team, of course. So that's going to be some mixed emotions there. It's going to be very odd seeing Ryan Reeves with another team. And how odd is it that you trade Ryan Reeves and it just so happens that the schedule gets announced and, oh, hey, the team you just traded him to, that's your first game of the uh, of the season. Yeah. Yeah, my comment on that is mixed emotions, right? So I think you got scared and really scared. Yeah, <laughs> there's only two. There's yeah. only two correct emotions to have when you're facing Ryan Reeves in the ice. One is scared, the other is very scared. So what I'm concerned about is, is that I'm hoping he has pity on the Blues and says, he says in the locker room before the game, he says to the boys, which is his Penguin boys now. His penguin says, boys. <laughs> yeah, he says Penguin. He says boys. Uh, I don't want to. You know, the, the team's already hobbled. I'm not going to take out anybody today, you know, for the Blues. But uh, I'll get it uh, Friday night when we play so-and-so or whatever. I don't think it's going to happen. Hope he does. I think he's going to come out. He's going to come out and put a big hit on somebody on his first shift because you know what the players always say. is They always say, hey, we're all friends off the ice. It's good seeing well, him again. Yeah, but I when you step on the ice, it's business time. Well, I hope he, I hope he pulls like a uh, – Hanson brothers and he hits like Hutton on the bench or something, but I hope he leaves our the rest of everybody else alone. We'll see what happens. I don't think he'll have any cheap shots, but no, man, he puts a put hurt on, on cheap somebody, shots, but he'll, he'll put on a big hit on somebody in that game. I guarantee it. Well, at least either that or nobody will want to go to the boards. <laughs> now, didn't you say we got a, we got a guy that's trying to uh, put on Ryan Reeves shoes, fill those shoes. Yeah. That'd be uh, Chris Thorburn. He was picked up from the Winnipeg jets. So what is and he he's, basic, he's basically Ryan Reeves, but with a little bit less skill, a little bit less um, goal scoring ability. And Ryan Reeves doesn't have a ton of goal scoring ability, but he was nice. And the fact that when his dad Willard was there, he'd always score a goal. So if they, if they would have kept uh, Willard Reeves around, he would have scored more goals. Well, what does he weigh in at? What's his? What's I'm pulling his up the uh, the details on him here. Two hundred pounds? No. What is he? Two thirty five. You got the roster up there yeah two six foot three two thirty five from salt saint marie salt saint he's a big guy chris thorburn's a big guy if you look at his stats right here though you'll notice he's got uh last year 95 penalty minutes he was a minus seven uh four points three goals one assist over 64 games how many points uh four points over 64 games so you definitely he's a fourth liner he's 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 a grinder he's a and forcer type of guy he's a big guy he's gonna throw the body around uh muck it up down in the corners but um, wow, we're gonna see a tilt between uh, Thorburn. That would be interesting, Thorburn, right there. You th- you're Reeves. seeing a fight coming from Thorburn and Reeves. Can we do a quick uh, Twitter? I'm gonna do while you talk for a second. I'm gonna do a quick um survey, and I want to see if anybody thinks it's a good idea that they have a, a tilt just to kind of a pass tilt. the torch. And I don't know. Uh, I don't know who I would cheer for in that scenario either. I don't know if I'm wanting Reeves to keep keep his streak going, keep winning fights, or if I'm wanting Chris Thorburn, the new blue, to beat him. Uh, hey, we got a ranking from Fabry's Curse, I think. What, what did you rate us? Said, Big thanks to Toast Batch for having me on tonight. It was fun. 10 slash 10 would do it again. I think that's 10 out of 10 point. I mean, that's, that's a ranking, right? You think that's how that works? I think that's what it is. You know all, that, you know all the abbreviations. <laughs> I don't. 10 slash 10 would do again. Is that what that means? It's 10 out of 10, yeah. Yeah, so 10 out of 10 times he would do it again. Well, then we're going to have him on nine more times. All right. Uh, let's see. Hey, Mark Parkinson gave us a nice tweet too. He says, these guys are fun. Listen to them. I have to agree with him there. We are fun. You should listen to us. Mark's got three followers though. No, no. no we love Mark. Mark's our, guy, Mark's our guy from the Calgary Flames SB no, Nation. He's, yeah, he's and so guy. actually that reminds me right now. So shout out to Mark. You can follow him on Twitter at mpark 14 news Great follow if you want to keep up with Calgary Flames or anything they're doing. He's an act- and speaking of the Flames, they just picked up uh, Yarmir Yager has signed with them. On a one million dollar deal, and then it gets some kind of bonus, like a million and a million dollars. dollar bonus. Yeah, so um, what is, I, what's the bonus for? What does he have? To I think do? it's performance incentives. I believe. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure on that, but I think that's for performance incentives. So like, you meet X amount of goals, you get you get your extra money. But um, do you think he's going to sign up with his ARP thing? Pretty. You think he's getting the ARP letters yet? 
But so yeah. <laughs> ask him if he wants to be a member of ARP. If you don't have a mullet, you don't know ARP. <laughs> hey, we got one other tweet from Mr. Uh, from Mr. Blue's hat, formerly known as Hitch's hat. Are the artists that had Hitch's hat, something like that. The artist formerly known as Hitch's hat. Yeah. Okay, he said he had a funny tweet as usual. Man, before we go on, can we just for a second beg Mr. Blue's hat? Uh, that's never going to gonna catch on. That, that name is just bad. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, come on. I'm Don't sorry. It doesn't him. it doesn't roll off the tongue. Mr. Blue's hat. Hitch's hat was just so was it was so corner. so smooth. He didn't have any choices. He had I'll tell you what something. though. Here's what I do like is I do love that Mr. Bean is his profile photo. That's that's great right there. Yeah, no, who doesn't like Mr. Bean? We're in a little hat Mr. there. Bean. Look at look at that look. Who, who could say no to that face? So I'm just gonna call him Hitch's hat like everybody else. We don't even <laughs> Mr. Blue's hat is just it's it's a moniker now, but I we know keep tagging him as Hitch's hat. Okay, but he says, as we were getting ready to have Fabry's curse on the show and lift the curse, which we successfully did, he said he's going to break your show. That was pretty funny. I like that one. There you go, right? And then uh, two other people tweeted in and said, you guys are losers, and I hate you. And that was more than two. Hmm. And Kevin Michael Leahy followed us tonight. And we are close to 1,900 followers, Nick. At this rate, we only need about 200,000 more tweets, and we should be going to 2,000. We're going to break 2,000 this year. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. All now, right, back, back, on, back on hockey real quick. Um, how do you think Jake Allen's going to do this year? Because I know you love talking about goalies. So are we going to see playoff Jake Allen where he steals a series from the wild and puts up the performance of his life, or are we going to see early season Jake Allen where he had a sub-900 save percentage? Well, I think first of all, what you have to consider is uh, is the kid still crying at home. If the baby's still That's crying every night, you can't get any sleep on the home games, then um, you know he's going to have some trouble. If uh, the baby's being breastfed and going to bed happy every night, and he doesn't have to get up with the bottle and all that other stuff, mm -hmm. you know, then I think he's going to have a great season. So I think it's really what it comes down to, you know, just looking at it from a technical aspect. Just yeah, well, I know that they had the photo I liked early on. Uh, when he first had the kid, he stuck him like in the little in the glove. He fits entirely in there. He's skating around the ice with his with his baby in his glove. Yeah. Well, okay. So all kidding aside, I'd say that uh, this could be. You know, we've said we thought a pivotal moment in his career came in round one of the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. We felt like it was really time for him to perform. Put up a fifty save. Yeah. Uh, overtime win. Yeah. All he did is is he all he did is exceeded. You know, went above and beyond the call of duty. Everyone's I could I would never have expected a, a playoff series to go that way uh, with with a, where you have Jake Allen and they're just stealing game after game after game. Yeah, well, he what he did is he stepped up to the plate. Mm -hmm. So he he with that in mind now, obviously he had any doubts that could have been lingering in the back of his mind. They're gone. He knows. Yeah, he belongs. He knows in he the NHL and he might. Now, the next question in his mind is. Is he not? Is he a really good? Is he a good goalie? A very good goalie, or is he going to work himself to become an elite goalie, mm -hmm. a top five goalie this year? Now that will take dedication, commitment, and uh, and the right mindset. You know, I, I think he's the kind of guy that quietly goes about his business, and I think he's the kind of guy that wants to win. He's got desire. And he's got to have that. I think he's got it. And I yeah. think this year, it'll be his opportunity to, to take it to the next level and basically move through the whole season like a pro. You know, eat up all the points we can get. Don't leave anything mm -hmm. on the table. And we'll make it to the playoffs. And then he will excel again, you know. And if you know, if you follow our show, you know, we've been pretty, we've been pretty critical of Jake Allen over the years. Um, but I, I think he, he really... Uh, put on a show last year, showed everybody, including us, what he's capable of uh, when he's at his peak. And now it's down to this year to see if he can cement that and say, this is the kind of goalie that I am. This is the kind of performance you can expect from me. And I'm a top five goalie in the league. Yeah. Now, and now of course, every game, he's not going to be able to, to win every 50 save game like he did in the playoffs. But if, if he can step up in those big moments and be a big game goalie, that'd go a long, long way with helping these Blues, especially with all the injuries they got this year. Yeah, and now to be fair, now our our criticism of Jake Allen was brought about by the team, not necessarily Jake Allen himself, okay, but really. And the whole team played bad for a stretch there. Yeah, because I did not like how he was the heir apparent without any 
game time without I mean without him really deserving it he it seemed to me that uh Armstrong was putting him in a position mm -hmm. uh you know to take over the reins when everyone everyone people I knew in hockey that are former NHL players and your average fan and your enthusiastic blues fan all most felt like at least the knowledgeable ones felt like hey why is you know what is going on with Elliot why isn't Elliot getting the shot he deserves and you know, and he, and he, and it wasn't time for, so that's what we were upset about. I didn't like that. I loved Elliot. I wanted Elliot to get his chances. All the ones, all, I wanted him to get everything he deserved. And Alan started getting pushed ahead of him. And I didn't like it. And I felt like it was like, he was, they were treating Alan like he was some little spoiled brat that was supposed to get everything he wanted. And I didn't like that. I didn't think it was good for him as development. And sure enough, when I was crying, away, what do they do? I remember that his first year in the playoffs, they threw him into the fire and baptism by fire. And man, he sank. It threw him in the water. And he well, that's what kind like of almost rock. made this this latest playoff series against the Wild so sweet, though, is because the first Allen's first experience in the playoffs was against the Wild a couple years back, which was the and he got he got absolutely he got smoked. He he wasn't ready at that point, but then he comes back two years later and gets another chance against the Wild and absolutely shuts them down. I can't imagine how satisfying that must have been for Jake Allen himself to say, "Okay, I'm back. I'm ready for this," and just completely steal that series. No, he did. So we we. We, I never hated him personally. I never thought his play was. I just did not think he should have been playing before El Elliot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was my gripe about him. But that's all. That's water under the bridge, as they say. So now what we got is a, a, a maturing, really a mature goalie, experienced NHL goalie who's ready to carry the load the whole year. That mm -hmm. was another question mark. And I think that's what will show one of the hurdles he'll get over again this year. So he'll show his professionalism by playing, you know, minus injuries, which you can't control that he's going to uh you know have a great season i what tell me what would you like to see would you like to see him play one you know would you like to see hutton play one out of every three games one out of every four two out of two i'd, out of I'd say one out of every five or six games hutton should play yeah you know i i like that because the, 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 the right? lion's share of the work of the workload yeah and the trend has been for years now the blues for various reasons have had goalies you're really only playing maybe 60% of the games, but never like 90, never like... No, no, that, those yeah. days are gone. It's, well, it's not that way anymore. still letting goalies carry that load. It, it, but but I don't mind keeping the load lighter for a player, but I think seven out of every 10 games should go to the starting goalie. Mm -hmm. And three, because at one, you need the points and you need to put your best players in the ice. Yep. And a goalie should be able to handle that load. So what is 70% of 82 games? Let's see. 82 times 70% is 57 games. So 57 out of 82 games, that's uh, that's not a big load at all. Yeah, let I'd me like see what – uh, I'm going to pull up real quick here what uh, – What he did last year? Yeah, what his stats were for last year. Uh, how many games he had played. I think he played 50-something. I think it was definitely in the 50s. Last year, even more, he played 61 games last year. Okay. Yeah, so that's about right. So probably about 73% of the games. So let's say between 70 and 75% of the games. You know, and really, if that. you look at his career, mm -hmm. just real quick, look at his career uh, trajectory here, they've been ramping up. He started off the first year back in 12, 13, played 15 games, up to 37, 47, and finally 61 this last year. All right. That's pretty good. Well, I'll tell you, what, I got one more piece of news here. Uh, it's fine interesting. So the Blues are, of course, renovating the Scott Trade Center. They got the great new Jumbo turn out there. Everybody loves it. Um, but... Uh, the if you could tell me what was the best thing that happened last year, what would you say the best thing was all of last year? Well, how are you trying? How are you going from uh, the jumbotron, the new jumbotron, to the best thing that happened last year? Am I on the no, no. Page? What what would be the most exciting event that happened in St. Louis last year? Well, uh, the Winter Classic, obviously, right? The Winter Classic. So the Blues have put in a bid to host the All Star Game in 2020 when the uh, renovation Scott Trade Center finished. Yeah. Now the last time uh, the Blues oh, oh, wait, hosted, wait before you say anything mm -hmm. else, I just had a great thought. Okay, I'm a, you heard it first here on the Toast's Back. Okay. Okay. Tage Thompson makes his first appearance in the All Star game, <laughs> and we're hosting it. And when the Blues host St. Louis. And it, they put in a bid to host in 2020. It's not official. No, I know. But if they got it, okay, I'm calling it right now. Mm -hmm. The Tage Thompson is going to, you know, vote him in. Yeah. He's going to, well, I don't know. How does that, do we get to it's, vote it's him fan in? votes? Yeah. So it fan vote him in. Yeah. Huh. Now, the last time the Blues hosted the All Star game was 1988 huh. at the St. Louis Arena. 
I don't and remember. the Wales team beat the uh, team Wales beat team Campbell uh, six to five in overtime. Is back is that back in the day when we had everybody Hall Gretzky and everybody in eighty? No, that no, that had been midnight early. The 90s. MVP was Mario Lemieux of that game. I wonder what the lineup was for the Blues. Hey, we gotta look that up real quick. We'll just start talking. I'm gonna look up the Campbell. Uh, what was uh, it, you talking about the All Star game lineup yeah, or the 1988 All Star game? Uh, you know what? There, here we go. Here, the lineup right here. Oh, you already got it. Yep. So for the well, Alma Kennis was in that All-Star game. He was a Calgary Flame at that time. Grant Fear was in the game, but he was with the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Rob Ramage was in there with the Blues. He was the Blues representative. Okay. Uh, Do you have your bell that goes ding, ding, ding? Let's see. Here it is. Okay. Don't don't hit it yet. No. Wait a second. Okay. You ready? Yep. No. Wait. Uh, I play hockey with Rob Ramage at times. Really? Uh, how's that? Where did you play with him at? The Blues alumni. I'm a goalie. Oh, there it is. We got a winner. <laughs> what do I get? Probably I uh, booted get. off the show. I don't know. I know. I should uh, probably get a bat <laughs> upside my head. He yeah, but there was there was a lot of wait. there was a lot of uh, player. Mario uh, Lemieux had six points in that game. Yes. No, he had three goals and three assists. Three goals, three assists, and the game winner in overtime. No, and, that, and it, it, how do I? I don't remember the 1988 All Star game. What was I doing? What were you doing? I was um, not born. Yeah, okay. You got a good excuse. I've got an excuse. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what yours is. You should have watched that one. I don't have any excuse. I, I can't even. I don't. Was it on Channel 11? What was it on? <laughs> Did I not have cable? I don't know what happened there. It's like a black hole. I can't. I can't think. How in the world would I miss the 1988 All Star game? If somebody's listening to the show right now, would you tweet out your memories of the 1988 All-Star game, please? Uh, so I can Another interesting fact, former Blues associate coach um, Kirk Mueller was in that All-Star game. Kirk he was, Mueller? He was the Blues um, assistant coach a couple years back. Hey, we got another tweet. Says you guys are idiots. Stop talking. The Drop uh, podcast. Uh, oh, gosh. I'm forgetting names. Uh, Lance forgetting? and Logan from oh, yeah, uh, the Drop Logan. podcast. Yep. Now... Lance is uh, kind of a stickler. He could have been like a lawyer. Lance, I think, is serious here, and he says, he says, be careful. Hockey Night in Canada is copyrighted. Now, is that true? I I'm not buying that. Is it true? I don't even uh, know what the drop was. Yeah, that didn't, that didn't play well. I'll edit that out. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the drop podcast. So Lance's are... Uh, Logan is asking us if we can believe that Yager signed with Calgary. I can indeed believe that. No, I, I believe it. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, uh, yeah, I guess it just is what it is, right? He's got to keep uh, playing he's, until he's they bringing won. the mullet back to Canada. <laughs> hey, I got a quick, quick trivia question for you, if I can say it. How many Canadian women are listed on the Stanley Cup? How many Canadian women? Uh, I do believe there is one. I remember reading about this at one point, but I forget the reason why. Yeah, you you got it right. Do you, you got the reason? No, I don't know why. Well, you don't know why. The owner. Was she, was the owner? To... she didn't play. I know she didn't play, but it's like, was she the owner? What was yeah, she? She was one of the owners. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm looking it up right now. And no, I don't Google see where I can't find it. I don't see Stanley what's that anymore. Little facts was... about the Stanley Cup. There was there's one woman that's on the Stanley Cup, and mm -hmm. she I believe it was just one. Well, here's a post that says uh, 13 women have their name on the Stanley Cup, and they were owners of front office executives. Huh. 13? 13. Well, that's getting a little more equal. The first woman to have her name engraved in the Stanley Cup was Margaret Norris, who won the cup as president of the Detroit Red Wings in 1954 and in 1955. The only Canadian woman to have her name engraved on the Stanley Cup is... Sona Skirfield, born in Hafford, Saskatchewan. So who had enough guts? Who's the one? Was there ever one person that had enough guts to try to steal the cup and was actually brought to, you know, brought before a judge? You mean besides Fabrice here? Yeah. <laughs> he probably, that's probably what was happening. He probably wanted to steal He it. says he brushed up against it. That sounds kind of suspect to me. I think he was trying to steal it and yeah, he got stared down by the cup one, handler. That's one step from a federal. That's larceny. Offense. That's grand larceny. So... One fan tried to steal a, a Stanley Cup, apparently. Okay, do you want to hear the story real quick? Let's hear this one. But it's not for the reason that you'd expect, right? Mm -hmm. You might think it's for money or whatever, right? Hold it hostage. Mm -hmm. Ransom. 
Oh, I know what shock yeah, so I know where you're going. Apparently, uh, Montreal fans are so adamant about the cup that during the 1962 playoffs, when the cup was on display at Chicago Stadium for the defending champion uh, Blackhawks, Boo. it says Habs fan Ken Killender attempted to take the cup and walk right out the door with it. When police when a police officer caught up and questioned him, Killender responded, okay, there's two different stories here. I heard the story that uh, he actually was in front of the judge. And the mm-hmm. judge says to him, he says, so, sir, uh, Mr. Killender, why did you take the cup? In his response, he said, I want to take it back to where it belongs in Montreal. A. 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 So that was his response, which was, man, I mean, that kind of honesty, I hope he got a light sentence because he just wanted to take it I home. mean, who, who could argue with that? Who wouldn't want to take the cup home? Now, can we say that, Nick? Could we go up and go in front of a judge and say, hey, I wanted to take it back to St. Louis where it belongs? No, not at all. So we probably couldn't say the belong. We couldn't part. say that. Montreal could say that. Yeah, we couldn't say that. But I'll tell you what, Vancouver riots, uh, Montreal steals the cup. Canadian cities just have this weird thing with cups. Yeah. We're I'm sure there's some of those out there. But anyway, I think that'll about wrap it up for tonight's show. Anything else you any other topics you had? Uh the drop podcast, Lance R. Logan is asking that we ring the bell because he was a goalie. So can you ring the bell for Lance? <laughs> All right, Lance. That one's for you. All right, Nick. Well, that does it wrap up. This is season three, episode one. Has it been three seasons? Has it been that long? It has indeed been three seasons. This is starting off season three. Of course, the first two seasons, we were Toast Dispatch Radio with Nick and Nick. This year, we're going a little bit different. It is Hockey Night in St. Louis. So thanks for listening, everybody. You can, of course, follow us on Twitter at Toast Dispatch. Uh, don't forget to follow Fabry's Curse on Twitter. So we you got can- a website? Uh, website is, is of course toastdispatch.com. You can check it out for articles, uh, videos, podcasts, archives, and more. Let's commit to something right now. We're gonna write one I'm, article a week. I'm so commit. We- I commit to nothing. Commit to nothing. I commit to nothing. <laughs> you can, there, you can go to the. Up. You've got. We've got lineup generators. The the Mike Yo lineup generator. The Hitchcock lineup generator. Lots of fun stuff. Check out the website toastdispatch.com. Oh, video Don't forget too. to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or your favorite podcasting app. Hey, now. Nick, there's video games on there too that uh, Ben made. There is indeed a video game. You can go and shoot. Hey, you can. Uh, I, hey, don't bring don't bring me into this. Um, <laughs> you can go. You can shoot zombie Blackhawks fans in uh, Blackhawk Down video game on Toast Patch website again. Of course, there's lots of stuff on there. Just go check it out. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. That'll wrap it up for episode one of season three. We will be back again next week. All right, see everybody.